This is Sunday edition on KTN News. Let's switch gears now. And the sixth devolution conference kicks off tomorrow, uh, running all the way till Friday in the county of Kirinyaga. Kirinyaga will be hosting that. Uh, of course, taking stock of devolution six years on, what are some of the gains that have been made? Um, political affairs reporter Mreem Wangi is part of our team on the ground in Kirinyaga and now joins us live from there. Moremi, um, good morning. What should Kenyans expect from the Devolution Conference 2019? Afternoon, Ben. The sixth annual Devolution Conference, Kirinyaga County being the lucky host this time, the venue not being very far from uh, Kirinyaga University College here at Kutus. Uh, Kutus is somewhere between Geshogo constituency and Kirinyaga Central uh, constituency with an intersection that can also lead you to Mwea constituency, not very far from here. Uh, the fact that the focus this time is on the Jubilee Big Four, of course, casts a spotlight on what are the, stre the strengths of these uh, counties that are within the Mount Kenya region, the host county as well as the neighboring counties. You look at food security, there will be lessons from uh, Kirinyaga County as well as the neighboring counties that deal in agriculture. Questions about manufacturing and job creation uh, is also part of what is likely to inform lessons from within the host counties here. The venues preparations almost done. Perhaps if we could just uh, show you them doing the final touches. This is where the main conference will be happening. And uh, close to 10,000 delegates expected here with uh, representations from the county assemblies, the county governments, as well as the national government. The first event when uh, this function opens tomorrow will be a football tournament, uh, bringing together four teams, one comprising the governors, another comprising the senators. There's another one comprising members of county assemblies, as well as one which is a combination of principal secretaries and cabinet secretaries. But beyond the fun that comes with that tournament, from Tuesday. It's serious business as President Uhuru Kenyatta comes in to make his address here. Remember, he is uh, the originator of the Jubilee Big Four and the fact that this has been cascaded down to the counties means he has to give his expectations about how the counties come in to facilitate implementation of uh, the manufacturing targets, uh, uh, the housing, affordable housing, the universal health uh, coverage as well as uh, food security, which as I said, uh, will be one where these counties from this region will be critical to give lessons about it. I have had the opportunity to visit Tarakanithi where the governor was uh, hosting what he called the innovation hub uh, where he would get uh, uh, the innovators from the county to showcase what they can do and part of those innovations were in the agriculture sector as well as visiting parts of Mwea as you know, Mwea is known for rice farming, and very many of those that will be coming here will be seeking to know uh, how that section of the county goes about planting rice, and specifically uh, the pishori, uh, which is quite common and uh, very uh, loved by very many Kenyans out there due to uh, the aroma that comes with that rice cooking. And therefore, these are some of the discussions that will be happening here. But beyond that, I had the opportunity to speak to at least four governors from uh, this area. Uh, I spoke to Kerenyaga Governor Ann Waiguru. I spoke to Tarakanithis uh, Mudomi Njuki, uh, Nyeris Mutahika, uh, Mutahika Higa, as well as Embus Martin Nyaga Wambora. And this is what they had to say about their expectations about this conference happening here. Uh, one of the things that we've done is we needed to look at our infrastructure and how people access uh, the venue of the conference. You've seen we've attempted to repair this road and, and widen it a little bit on the sides. They haven't quite tarmacked the sides, but at least they've leveled it so that it's a bit easier for um, the vehicles as they come in. We've also um, added streetlights um, all the way from... Um, um, Sagana all the way to uh, Kutus, also for security reasons, and around the uh, conference area that wasn't there before. Kirinyaga is only one county away from Trakanidi, and we'll take more stuff this time, because Kakamega, because of the distance and the cost, of course, we cannot take as many as possible. So we'll make sure that most of our critical departments are represented, and they will have very specific instructions that they have to file a report on the value addition that they have given to the county when they get back. Uh, you may not have noticed, but if you haven't, let me maybe bring it to your attention that one of the clarion calls of the Rakanidi is it a haven of value addition. Counties really are, the, are a key 
uh, units in the implementation of, you, of, 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 of the big four. And there is no way national government can uh, implement the big four in the air. It must be within counties. Yes, so we are important. We have to compare ourselves with, the, with other countries. Um, a country like Japan, which has 47 devolved units, they get 60% of the revenue, annual revenue, at any given year. And the national government gets the balance 40. Nigeria, cross home, uh, the devolved units get 55%, and the national government gets 45. Here we get 15, uh, the constitutional requirement is 15, but in effect, it is between 12 and 13. Well, some of the thoughts from uh, the governors from this area, and therefore, as the discussions happen here, remember the spotlight is on the role of the counties to facilitate implementation of the Jubilee's Big Four. But a quick question that many uh, critics of uh, these forums will be asking is how realistic the resolutions that will be arrived at here are in terms of implementation before we come to the next conference. Back to you, Ben, in studio. And um, Moreni, before I let you go, um, if you can still hear me, um, there's a lot of business uh, that comes with these devolution conferences, a lot of people coming into the county, so a lot of uh, business opportunities for, for people there, uh, accommodation and whatnot. Kirinyaga, uh, Kirugora town is not a very big town. Uh, will they be able to host everyone will be coming down there? Well, uh, this conference will, for the one week or so, uh, bring some life to Kerugoya town, which uh, is known to go to sleep quite early. But given that the conference is happening at Kutus, not very far from Embo County on this other side, uh, there's expectation that a majority of those that will be coming to the conference here will be seeking accommodation on the lower side, uh, a town called Sagana, as well as some of them going as far as Embu. I had the opportunity to look at a few uh, of the accommodation facilities that are there and uh, it's uh, it's interesting that some of them are fully booked because some of the delegates will be coming in from as far as Embu coming to the venue here at Kutus and in terms of business uh, I said a quick commodity and a key commodity that very many people will be seeking to buy from Kerenyaga is the Pishori rice and therefore farmers in the Moya section are quite upbeat about this conference because they hope to get uh, more uh, market with the conference that happens here at Kutus as well as residents here much as they might not uh, fully understand the scope of what will be happening within the conference they know that the fact that close to 10,000 delegates will be coming here means more opportunities for them in their various businesses and therefore quite a lot of excitement for the residents here even for the infrastructure uh, some upgrade had to happen for the road connecting Kutus and Sagana and lighting also uh, uh, within the major highways leading here to Kutus town and therefore that's a benefit to the residents here even beyond the conference which kick starts tomorrow. Ben. And Morimi you also mentioned that uh, the first item of business tomorrow will be a football match which will involve a team of governors. Do we know if Anwar Goro, the host governor, will be playing in that football match? Well, I put that question to her when we met for the interview. She did not seem quite uh, optimistic about participating in the football tournament. But you never know. Uh, perhaps it could be uh, one where residents here get to see her other skill, which could be in football. Uh, but we know that uh, uh, one, one of the teams that has performed very well uh, previously, whenever these uh, football tournaments happen, is the team of the Senators, with their captain being uh, Speaker Kenneth uh, Lusaka. There's also that team of members of county assembly and therefore we will be keenly uh, looking in to see how these two whose work is legislation uh, will go on against uh, the governors, the PSs and CSs who presumably are technocrats and therefore it will be a face off between uh, legislators and technocrats so to speak but we will be looking at the skills when they get down to <laughs> the tournament which will be happening tomorrow Ben all right many thanks political uh, reporter Marie Mwangi part of our team covering the devolution conference 2019 that kicks off tomorrow all the way 
until Friday. We shall be uh, covering that for you in the way only we here on KTN News can. Gentlemen, let's talk about devolution. Uh, Kipchumba, let me begin with you. Um, the challenge that a lot of people seem to be raising is that uh, there is, uh, every, every devolution conference has a set of resolutions. Uh, do we seem to understand how to pick those and carry them and come the next year we have learned something and implemented some of those res resolutions? Do you think our counties have the capacity to do that? I think the question should be, did we implement the first, the first resolution of the first uh, COG <laughs> meeting? That is the first thing. Secondly, have, do we have the follow through? I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. Mm -hmm. But again, what we need to ask ourselves, Ben, is the fundamental question that whereas devolution remains the, the best fruit that Kenyans got out of the Constitution 2010, mm -hmm. there have been several hurdles. And most of these hurdles, are, I think, have been created by the governors themselves. Look at all the things. When you read uh, chapter 11 of our constitution, there are very beautiful things about devolution. But when, they, when you go to the counties, apart from the very many Facebook likes and uh, the wars on Facebook and Instagram and elsewhere, we do not have a lot that has been achieved. Whereas it has helped to open up the country. There are, there are three things that, as a person, I would like to see, to see them being discussed there. First of all, I would like to see the issue of corruption. And I'm glad President Kenyatta will be there tomorrow mm -hmm. opening the conference. I would like him to buy them into the issue that the, the fight against corruption should be devolved to the counties. And the DCI and the DPP should head toward that direction because you can see the greatest sleaze is happening there. We are creating village millionaires and a lot of mushrooming development in the village. Mm -hmm. Kinoti should be there also. The other thing is this, the taxation models are failing the country. The reason why this mass always say that our economy is going wherever it's going, which I, I might not choose to agree, South. is <laughs> is because we have the wrong taxation models. Ben, today if you are a businessman carrying your mangoes from Kitui to Wasingishu, you will have to pay levies between Nairobi, Nakuru, and you pay Wasingishu. That is, we need to harmonize our taxation models. Right. I hope that will be a key feature. The last thing that I, I think also we need to ask the KRA, the Kenya Revenue Authority, in conjunction with all the counties to do, is what we call the expenditure at the source. Kenyans are losing a lot of billions because of how governors expend money at the source. You collect money from the market, the money is put somewhere, it is used in a manner that does not does not appreciate the mm -hmm. principles set out under the Public Finance Management Act. Mm -hmm. So I think we should now look at using the mega resources to further the issue of the, the issue of devolution. And because we are discussing also the discourse in the country now is about the referendum. I think one of the resolutions they should come up with is now we need to adapt the word as the unit of development so that we can go past the counties. Right. Because, you know, we, we remember we devolved all the brokers that came from each county to their county headquarters. We need to go deeper to the ward level so that the Mamamboga, Mora, the Mwaniki in Runyenges can sit down and say, we want to have a road here right. from the county funds. Um, husband, the, cascading the big four uh, from, from the national level to the counties as, as is being attempted here, um, do you think the counties have given uh, the Big Four agenda and the president's policy, you know, the support it, it, it deserves? Well, uh, even if they have, I don't think there's evidence to show that they've done anything substantive. I mean, there are 47 counties, so uh, you, you run the risk of universally saying they've not. So I, I appreciate the fact that there could be other counties that have done that. Mm -hmm. But I think there is need for, for them to let Kenyans know what they are doing and how it fits into the, the, the Big Four agenda. And I think the Big Four agenda should be one of the critical things that they are discussing there, and it should not be as abstract as it is. Uh, I mean, at the county level, I think people need to see housing, people need to see health care, uh, people need to see, uh, you know, job creation, increase in manufacturing. And, and for me, I, I think I had the opportunity to see how the Chinese model has managed to get people from small and medium enterprises to large corporations. Mm -hmm through a blended model where there is, there is a grant that is given by the government and then there is a loan. So much so that the grant cushions, uh, you know, any trader, any agriculturalist from, 
you know, that, that, that repayment of, of the amount of money and then investment in capital. So the grant invests in capital and it scales up their production. And the ripple effect in that is, is, is big because then it, 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 it scales up their manufacturing capacity and enables them to employ more people. All right. And to a large extent, you have 47 counties that will provide you that market. So there is, there is manufacturing of furniture in Migori, there is agriculture in Kirinyaga, how does the big four then get cascaded down so that that, that, that uh, manufacturing guy in Migori who manufactures uh, furniture, and there's one big one called Zaudon Furniture, how does the county government enable him create employment by scaling up his production and providing a necessary framework where he can export them to other regions? Because I know in Kisi, for instance, our neighbors, they don't do a lot of furniture manufacturing, but they have plenty of food. So how does the governor in Kisi create jobs by expanding the agricultural industry in Kisi and, 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 and export to other regions and in the process create jobs and of course get revenue to fund uh, universal health care in Kisi County. I think those are the conversations that governors need to have. All right. and, and, and I think it's, 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 it's been six years down the lane. We need to have value for money for devolution conference. All right. Mark, do you think uh, we are complicating things for the counties too much too soon? I mean, they're still many of them struggling to balance between uh, you know, paying salaries, the, the current expenditure, and having some money for development, yet we want them to deal with housing and manufacturing. Well, the, the truth of the matter is that we are, are we asking for too much from counties? Yes, we are, but should we stop? No, we shouldn't. Uh, what I mean is this, that the expectation of devolution was always to localize development. It is the job of uh, various counties to emulate uh, the American model, of, of, of course, though in a smaller model, where the economy of California alone as a state is nearly 10 times that of Kenya. And, and that's how you build a country. If you look at the Swiss, for example, they've taken the uh, federal government of the Swiss and they've made various Swiss states uh, as powerful as entire nations. And that's really the, the ambition that we had when we gave county governments power over agriculture, over healthcare, and things like that. Now, the disappointment is not in the sense that they cannot balance between the recurrent expenditure and, and, and expenditure because the truth is many governors have taken the governor's position as a tool of campaigning and they've done very populist moves. Number one, they've overhired people. Uh, governors have two advisors, he, uh, have a driver, a chef, uh, a, a cook, uh, a, an assistant cook, all those things. <laughs> For what? A chef and a cook. Yes, a chef, a cook. And an assistant cook. That's what they are. How you much see. does he consume? You see, so those are the problems. Uh, we've talked about in this show that some county assemblies consume more toilet paper than the As biggest KC. yes, than the biggest hotels in this country. So clearly we, we have the priorities wrong. If you look at healthcare, we've got governors who've invested more in uh, putting ambulances on the road because then they can write the name of the county and which governor uh, put it. And you see those I see those ambulances more in Nairobi than I see them in their villages. So there is uh, that need to be uh, populist in how they do things, and they've not made the proper decisions that, uh, that need to go forward. But I'd like to jump to a question you asked. Is the devolution conference useful? Uh, my answer is it is useful in two ways. It is useful, number one, to the economy of the people around there. The people of Kutus, I'm sure, will enjoy hosting these people and getting good bills. And from last year, it makes for good entertainment on social media based on what deputy governors get up to. This was, um, do you see the devolution conference having, having any impact or useful, usefulness? Obviously, you know, you've seen lately, uh, the last few days, uh, the reports about uh, a supplier supplying a lot of uh, condoms to that part of the world. So I don't know what these uh, people are anticipating. <laughs> but be that as it may, this I revolution conference... I haven't seen that, <laughs> that report, but uh, go on. <laughs> yes. It is everywhere. The it's, it's, all, it's all over. Okay. <laughs> but the revolution conference, in my view, would serve a, a useful purpose if the governors actually mean what they say and if they invite outside expertise. From the first time, the first devolution conference, it has largely been the same people, same governors, same deputy governors, and same senators. It's a bit of uh, incest. I don't know whether they entertain any subject matter experts that can give them a fresh thinking. And so if this one, if they're just going to be talking about how do we bring our big four 
how do we get more money from the national governments, then it's just going to be a waste of time and it's going to be stale. Even the media probably needs to be challenged not to cover stimulus coming from uh, that kind of conference. Because this devolution conference will make sense if, number one, in their priority list, they're talking about how they're going to reduce recurrent expenditure. Because on average, they use up to 80% of their budgets to buy newspapers and uh, flowers for their offices, mm -hmm. and also pay the multitude of advisors which Achi is talking about. If they're able to come up with a strategy to reduce the recurrent expenditure maybe to 30%, if all of them can agree to fire all those people who are employed at the county governments doing nothing. For instance, I mean, it's the height of insanity that a governor would have uh, 30 advisors. One on economics, never mind he's got a minister for planning, an advisor on the environment, he's yes. got a C0. So, I mean, then why did you even run for office if you cannot think on your own motion? <laughs> why do you need all these advisors? That's the first thing. Then the second thing, these fellows who gave this uh, constitution and told us we shall have a devolution, part of their key performance indicators was not again to devolve corruption. Because now we understand that at the moment you become an MCA or a CEC or a governor, then you immediately become a millionaire on the worst case scenario. But uh, when you are playing in the right league, you'll become a billionaire. So you've got so many billionaires in the villages who have not engaged in any factors of uh, production. But most important, we would become a very successful nation if, for instance, Kisi County has got a bigger GDP than Rwanda. The way California has got mm. a bigger GDP than Kenya. But now you've got governors here, when they wake up in the morning, all they want to do is to buy an ambulance and have their portraits. They want to go and put up a toilet and have their portraits. Can these guys not sit down and harness the economies? If you go to Mombasa, they've got a governor called a Joe. Yes. Can you not work with hospitality experts? That are, that all tourists, when any tourists from Europe, everywhere, when they're thinking of going to Africa, they come to Mombasa. So that at some stage, Mombasa is so liquid that when Rotich is uh, running to Central Bank to get money, that Joe can actually loan the national government mm. because it's running a surplus. Right. But now the governors we have, I mean, <laughs> from uh, tomorrow for the next week, the, the stories that are your reporters, and I hope all reporters in Kenya are not going to be focused on color stories, on the kind of suits people are putting on, whether the they are Bryony, mm. whether they are Kitenges, where they'll be sleeping, the kind of socks. Let reporters for the first time give us intellectual content. Mm. But unfortunately, majority of our reporters will just be wanting to see how does Songo come in, how many cars is he driving, and uh, this other one, how many experts. You remember during the last uh, revolution conference in uh, Kakamega, there was a governor who came with a shoe shiner all the way. That at the moment the specks of dust, the shoe shiner is around the corner. <laughs> Don't you think that's an important uh, shoe it's story? Ben, ben, it's it is, important it is in this important story. so the people that we know the kind county, of governors we have. What yeah. the governors no, okay, have then, then, then it should be name and shame. Then it should be name and shame. No, no, no. But Ben, you must not Nobody shame does or protect, on what, what you must not protect the media every time. Whatever this man is raving, what we are saying is that they should not, pro they should not portray the, the man who came with a shoe shiner or the governors who will go there with their dancers so that they can be entertained. But what we are saying is, whereas we are covering the entertainment part of these governors and showing the people fr back at home what they are doing, we can also show the world that there, there are some few people in these governors who belong to intelligentsia, who can, uh, can have a discussion <coughs> about going forward. That also happens in the, in yeah. the devotion. You know, but anyway. I think it is, it is also important, because the basis upon which these governors are given power is, is based on information. We, we, we vote knowing that when I vote Mark Bichachi, Mark Bichachi is going to do something substantive. So if Mark Bichachi is just going to floss around with shoes and shoe shiners and cooks and assistant cooks, I also need to know so that <laughs> when the right time comes, I withdraw that power. So I cannot blame the media. The media needs to expose in fact, everything. In fact, everything. We, we leave no stone on cover. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the important conversations. And gentlemen, before I let you go, last year during the devolution conference in Kakamega, that's when this story of... Uh, uh, the referendum proposal to, to, to have a second tier of government, that's, that's when it came out. Any big political news you expect from this one, Kipchumba? No? No, no, there will be news, of course. Looking at the itinerary of the Council of Governors, I'll expect that uh, once in a while somebody will throw in the referendum and uh, the other person will throw in 2022 once in a while. Okay. But uh, what I know that will, it will not take center stage is the problems that Mora in Mosocho is having, <laughs> my problems as a villager from Tarbo constituency, 
those ones will not take center stage. But 2022 and uh, big news from will... the president. He has well, been very quiet. Do you my, 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 my prayer is that they don't talk about the referendum. They don't talk about the structure of governance because from where I see it, governors will defend the counties and people will come with proposition and then it will become the key thing. The, the focus for this, I think, uh, is long overdue. These governors need to start attending to critical issues that affect Akini, affect Nduta, affect Wanjiku, affect uh, Mora. Yes. Irrespective. What's of, your big of, expectation, Mark? Well, from my expectation conference. is, uh, as usual, they'll ignore all the elephants in the room. <laughs> the elephant of healthcare, how it's failing under devolution. They will ignore the elephant of corruption. I think only the president and uh, his ilk will talk about corruption. The governors will focus on the pomp and glare. And then the headline they will all want is to be given more money from central government so that they can free right. the resources they receive from the market to enter their pockets better. You, well, well, my, well, my expectation is that uh, they're going to come up with strategies on prudent financial management. <laughs> That's my only expectation. Is that your wishful right. thinking? Actually, that's you? my wishful thinking. Yes. <laughs> that they'll come forward with a prudent financial management. All right. And you remember, Ben, we've said here times above number. Why can't we adopt zero-based budgeting? Why, why can this idea be introduced in that devolution conference that every county, instead of just adding budgets upon budgets, why can't they be... All right. And then the other important thing Good is that taxation. Yes. Taxation is a, a big elephant in the room. And uh, where it comes from, money is collected from markets every single day. But if you want to trace whether it gets to the national coffers. You can't see. All yeah. right. We shall be, uh, the Devolution Conference 2019 will be running from tomorrow, of course, all the way till Friday. We shall be covering every aspect of it here on KTN News. Let's take another quick commercial break. When we come back, uh, prepare to call us or Skype us with your questions and comments. Uh, tell us what you think about the big topics of the day. Stay with us.